No matter how you look at it, it's the same. Today on Hands On. Five, four, three, two, one. It's back to basics on this 10th anniversary series of Hands On. Each show has a basic theme like patterns or letters, plus a basic how-to lesson on your favorite craft or craft material, like scrapbooking or clay or even wood. Each show also includes another basic, a painting lesson, from choosing paint to preparing your surface. At the end of the next 13 shows, you'll know everything about painting and be on your way to becoming an artist. So on each show, you can look forward to a basic theme, lots of projects, each with five steps and five ingredients. Keep basic supplies like scissors, markers, toothpicks, and rulers on hand. Remember, be creative and get back to basics with Hands On. Welcome to Hands On. Our topic today is symmetry. That means that one side or half of an image is exactly the same as the other or appears to be a reflection or mirror image. Symmetry is also a feature of shapes and it's also found in nature. Butterflies and moths are a perfect example. In fact, that's our first project, a butterfly card that's perfectly symmetrical. Next, it's the basic lesson on air dry clay with Gail Ritchie. Prudy's painting lesson is working with stains on wood. Then our clay expert, Gail Ritchie, returns with a great symmetrical project. Last up, symmetry is illustrated perfectly with a jewelry project with Tracia and Sydney Williams. I'll be right back with our first project. Our first project on symmetry is a butterfly card. Butterflies are symmetrical in real life and also on the front of our card. Here's what you'll need. First, we have some cardstock in pink, red, and white. I have some yarn, some miniature clothespins, a chenille stem, a paint marker, white paint. Then I have two types of glue. I'm using a glue stick and also rubber cement. Now for tools, I'm using a hard punch, a crimper, our decorative edge scissors, a small hole punch, and regular scissors and a brush. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is to take our cardstock. This is five and a half inches by 11. I'm going to fold it in half to make my five and a half inch square card. There's my card. Now the next step that I want to do is to add some dots around the edge. I'm using my marker and I'm going to just dot all the way down just as a decorative accent. And I have one that's completed here. Now the next thing I want to do is make the actual body of my butterfly, which is going to be right here. So I have my brush, I already have some white acrylic paint on my palette, and I'm going to paint the entire clothespin. Now you're going to have to have a little part to hold, so what I would do is paint all the bottom, let that dry, leave it down, then when that's dry, lift it up by the other end. Now I have one that's already painted, and I'm going to take my marker, and you can see I'm going to add a little face, just add a smile and his eyes. And then the next thing is we have to give him antennae. So I've taken a half of a chenille stem, folded it in half again, and then I'm just going to curl the ends around my finger. Now we're going to glue that on the back of the little body. To do that, I'm going to get some rubber cement. And you're going to have to put this on and then let it dry overnight. You can either even put a piece of tape to hold it, because you want to make sure that this is very secure. So I'll attach that down using my rubber cement. And as I said, you're going to have to let this dry for a little bit, just until the glue really sets up. You can hold it in place and press that down. And I'll just set it down here on my plate to dry. I have one that's all ready. Now the next step is I want to make my butterfly. And I'm going to crimp that. So I'm using a crimping tool. To use a crimping tool, you open up, let the handle spread apart, drop your paper in, squeeze the handle, and then just turn the knob on the side. And it's going to crimp your paper. So I just put in a piece of cardstock. I'll set that aside. Now on my card stack, I've taken my butterfly pattern. Remember it's just symmetrical. Exactly one side is exactly the same as the other. I'm going to take my pencil and let's turn it this way so that my butterfly lines are going in this direction. I'm going to trace around 
and then I would cut that out with scissors. And I've got one all cut out here. Then the next thing I want to do is to attach this to a pink piece of paper. So I'm going to take my glue stick, add the glue to the back. This glue goes on purple, but it's going to dry clear. This way you know where you've got glue. You want to put a little bit extra because we're using a corrugated surface. Add that on. That'll take a second to dry, so I have one ready here. Now I'm going to take my decorative edge scissors. And the first one that I'm going to take is kind of a uh, wavy line. I'm going to lay my scissors down, lift up, line up the scissors again so that the pattern is the same. Go down again. And then I would continue all the way around until I've got that all cut out. Then I'm going to glue this again down to a white piece of paper and take a different decorative edge scissor and cut again. Again, I'm laying the pattern and matching it up. Match up my the little ridges and go all the way around until I have my entire butterfly cut out. Now the next thing I want to do is to take my hole punch and I'm going to use some of the scrap from this white and just cut out some hearts. You can also cut these free form and there's a pattern included in the instructions. And those pop right out. I've got some that are already cut out. So I've got my hearts. Now I want to attach that on. I'm going to use my glue stick again. Slide that off. And I'm going to do a symmetrical pattern. Because remember, butterflies are symmetrical. So I'll put one down. And let's place the others in position as to where we put them. So I'm going to have three on this side, which means I also need three on the other side. That's sticking to my finger a little bit. Line that up. And let me bring this one in where I can show you what I've already done. Three and three. And then I've gone back with my red marker, added dots here, and added dots here. Now my last step is to go back to my card. I'm going to glue this on. Then I have the body, which is already done. I'm going to slide that in right through the card and glue that down as well. And my last step is I've added just a little tag with From My Heart. And there's our butterfly card. So let's take one last look at the final project. Hi, I'm here with Gail Ritchie of Macon's Clay. She's going to show us a new clay that we haven't tried before, which is air dry clay. Hi, Gail. Hi, Kathy. So tell me about this clay. Uh, this is an air dry polymer clay. It, you do not have to bake it like you normally on the other polymer clays. It dries completely okay. uh, firm just with air. That's amazing, because I always thought you'd have to put it in the oven. So let's get started. Show yes. me how it comes. OK, it comes in a nice box like this um, in the smaller packages, and we do have larger. It comes double wrapped, and the way, way to open it up is just cut this off, mm -hmm. remove this outside package. OK, so it has another inside package of plastic, so it's very protected, so it's not going to dry right. out in the packaging. Oop. So. You could just discard this. What I recommend to do is to use a pair of scissors and cut a piece off. Oh, and cut right through the plastic. Okay. Leaving this other plastic on and then put that in a zip bag. Oh, okay. Great. Okay. Now I also see that you have some here. You've got a paper towel here and I assume you have clay underneath. Yes. Is that for when you're working with it? When you're working with it, you want to keep it damp mm -hmm. so that um, it doesn't dry out. Either keep it covered with a a damp paper towel or keep it covered with a plastic wrap or in a zip bag. Okay. And now also too, I see you've got your work surface protected here. What is this on here? Uh, this is just a cutting mat because the clay does not stick very well to it. Um, you can use the... Yeah. Uh, a baking mat or something. It's just probably a, you just never a, want to use this for baking again. This right. is only for your clay. It, yes. It, you want to protect good wood, wood, good wood surfaces. This, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and uh, so if you, you're working on Formica, it's okay to work. Mm -hmm. But clay is really can nice. Take that. Thank you. Um, you can mold it. Mm -hmm. You can make it, little balls. Well, with it has it. such a different consistency got, too than when I'm, right. I'm used to feeling. It feels, it's just a little bit thicker. It's yes, and it dries to a nice satin finish. Mm -hmm. You can make beads with it. Uh, stick it with a, a toothpick to make beads. Mm -hmm. You can roll it in your hands. You make snakes. You're doing a barrel shape? 
Yeah, it's an instant steak. Instant steak. I'll put this out of the way. Okay, and another fun thing to do with this is use um, a rod, plastic rod like this, and we can roll the clay out. Okay, and you tell me too that there's some mm -hmm. other things you can do once it's rolled out flat. Okay, I can give you one. Yes. This is a texture plate. This is a texture plate, and the best thing to do with that is to um, brush it with some baby powder mm -hmm. so that your clay doesn't stick. It, oh, that's a good tip. Or you can let your clay dry just a little bit mm -hmm. so it's not as, not as moist, and then just press in it. Oh, so you can make any texture you need. I bet you could do other things too, other textures. You can use other textures. You could use lace, uh, mm -hmm. fabrics, anything you want. And how about two, um, another tool that you can use are the push molds. Are the push molds. Um, it becomes, they have quite a few different molds. Mm -hmm. And what I would do on these also would be to brush it with a little bit of powder. You okay. get too much, just tap it off. Okay, so for everyone watching, the, uh, you want to make sure you have something to protect your work surface and you want to have some baby powder and a brush on hand if you're going to be using molds or... Molds uh, or textures, right. Okay. And then you would just push the clay in. You know, and you push off the excess. No, oh, it just pinches off like just that. Just pinches off. And then it unmolds. If I have powder in here, right? Oh, Oops. look it. Yeah, and then um, you have your trimming tools too. Yes, you can. If you're making the sheets, mm -hmm. rolling out a sheet, you can cut it with the a nice uh, little plastic roller. Mm -hmm. It'll cut. Or we've got looks like a pizza wavy nut. ones. Uh huh. Oh, and the same thing textures. too. And even when you were using the mold, if you want to cut away that excess, excess, you can use a little bit. Use your cutter as well. Right. And you also brought another tool. This looks a little complicated. What's that? Uh, this is an extruder, and it's to get nice little thin snakes, etc. with it. Um, what you would do is just make a little bit of a log. Do you know what it looks like, what you make cookies with? It looks like the ones you make cookies mm -hmm. with, right. Um, just put some clay in there and pick which disc you wanted to use. Put it in here. And then just twist. When I get to the clay. Oh, look at Oh, that's great. Because it would be very hard to roll those out that even. Right. Now, you have another machine that you brought along, too. Oh, uh, this is the clay machine that mm -hmm. we use. Um, it gets, you can get your uh, nice even sheets and it goes quite thin. It'd be great for mixing colors too. You can mix colors, right, because it takes a while using with your fingers. And you have some sheets that you already rolled out. Now this one, if you bring that over, this one's already dry. These it, are sheets. It's so are... flexible once it's dried. Um, and you can do other things here too. I, right. Can you use punches? Uh, you can use the uh, paper punches. Mm -hmm. You just Look how thin that is. Oh, and you can make nice little embellishments them. to put on other things. Or the hand punches. You that is it. great. And the only other thing, you told me you were going to show me about mixing color. You can make your own uh, custom colors with this. Well, they come in so many beautiful colors, but if you don't have the right one, then you, you can add any color of acrylic paint to it. You can add colors of acrylic paint, or you can take different colors of your clay and mix it together. I'm going to take just a little bit of the red and mix it with the yellow. And just work And it we're like going this. to make orange. And it will make orange. Well, Kale, thank you so much. Now you're going to be back later in the show. Now that you know about using air dry clay, we've got a great project for you. This lesson is all about staining wood. Stains come in every kind of wood and color you can imagine. I prefer an acrylic stain because it's uh, water soluble, cleanup is easier, and there's no fumes. Um, like I said, the colors vary. This is a dark stain. This is a light stain. And this is a light stain, but I wanted it darker, so I just added another coat. So you can manipulate your shade a little bit by doing that. Um, this one is a sample of a board using two stains. I did the light one first, let it dry, taped off some stripes, and then painted a dark one over the top of it. How do you stain? You can use a sponge brush or a rag and go long, easy strokes with the grain of the wood for a good stain. Like I said before, if you want it darker, you just give it another coat. Easy. 
One nice thing you can do, you can stain with any of the acrylic paints. You simply mix a lot of water with it and put it on. If you want it darker, stain it twice. Uh, there is an acrylic uh, medium that goes with a, a color that makes a stain. You put it on your palette, you mix it, and what this does for you it keeps the paint from drying real fast, which um, allows some manipulation of it. So if I wanted to antique with this stain, I would simply mix this one to one, load my brush, and I get the stain effect, but I can play with it a little bit. If I want my edges red, I use this mix. It's still a stain because you can see the grain through it. It's a great product and helps a lot with different effects. So be creative in using your stains and enjoy. And that's all you need to know about stains. I'm back with Gail Ritchie from Macon's Clay. And now that you know everything about air dry clay, we're going to make this great box here. So pretty. Oh, thank and you. it's exactly symmetrical too, because this is our show on symmetry. So what do we need yes. to do? What we need to do is to remove the mints from your tin, and then we'll take some of the blue clay, and I'm going to run it through the clay machine. Oh good, we get to see the clay machine, because I love that. Oh look how thin and that is. This has been sitting here for a little while, so it's a little bit dry, but you just Okay. So you get this nice sheet of clay. And I've got this one right here, which is a little bit thinner, mm -hmm. and I'm going to just cover the bottom of the tin. You kind of start in the middle and push it out. And it's just going to stick there. And it will stick. It sticks wonderfully to metal, paper mache, glass, you know, just kind of work it around a little bit. Oops. If you Well, the clay's really too forgiving. Much. You can just push right. it back in. Yes. And then we'll take this nice uh, little chisel tool, and it will... Just cut and pull it away. Once you have all the clay away, you just want to go back again and kind of smooth it out here. Mm -hmm. And make sure you just keep your tools clean because it does want to dry there. OK, now we want to add a texture to this one. Once that's done, you would have it done all the way around. I start with the sides. OK, now do we put powder on this as well? You would powder the texture sheet. Uh huh. And um, let's see, oh, I've got powder on this side. Just press it down. And it's as easy as that. And it's then we have texture. And if you don't really like it. Oh, you can just smooth it right just over. Do it again. That okay. is great. You want to cover the bottom. Mm -hmm. I would let that dry just a little while. And then we'll cover the top. OK, so you've got one that's all ready here yes. where the top and the bottom are covered. So now what are we going to make? Now we're going to put the stem on. OK. And we're going to use the extruder again with the small disc. I love that tool because that is, makes it so easy. Right. It's and you can the, get such thin shapes. Yes, one of the best investments. And we'll just twist it out. Yep. <whistles> Cut it off. And we'll just add a piece. Mm -hmm. uh, add a piece to the tin for your stem. Okay, so next are you our want, leaves. I'll move our extruder out of the way. You want to uh, get it nice and s straight on here, a little now, better than I would. Okay, now do, how do you make that stick? Will it just stick to the other clay? It sticks to the other clay. If it doesn't want to, then you, it adheres with water. Oh, so we just you use would a, just would brush. I've got water and a brain brush, and we right, would just, br just dab brush that it. on. Okay, let's make our leaves. Okay, we're going to just use a nice molding mat. Okay, and we've got uh, powder already and I in have there. Powdered it. We're just pressing the green press clay the in. And press it all the way through. And if it's sticking and a little bit, you can always, like, just like you said, you can remold it as many times as you need. Or you just sit, let it dry in here and it will do. Now, see, it's wanting to stick, but I do have one that's already done. Okay, we'll stick that one on. Here, and I'll play with this one while you're and doing that. You would just take and Put one on one side and put one on the other. OK, let's make our flower. Now we're I'll going to with work with the flower. A nice uh, technique to do is roll out your sheet nice mm -hmm. and thin and cover it with plastic wrap before you cut. And it gives you a nice rounded. Oh, that that's a good tip. 
The other thing is, is our clay is a little bit moister on air because we've got all these lights, so it makes everything a little warmer. It, yes, and it's a little bit difficult sometimes to work with, but. And you would just take and put your petals. Okay, and I've got another there. leaf for you. Thank you. And so we'll keep putting our flowers on. And then the last step, you want me to, I'll work, play with the flowers if you want to show us our center. I'll and work on the petals. And just take a little bit of brown clay and roll it into a ball in the middle of your hand, in your hand. I just, and now how long will this take to dry? This will dry completely uh, in 24 hours. Sometimes it'll dry a little bit less, depending on the humidity around. Um, but the clay is a little bit too soft right now. And so just we're all having these trouble. lights. All right. these lights. If you're not trying to rush it, just let it sit for a little while. Then you would put your center in your clay, in your flower. And you want to add some texture. And a couple dots. Let's look at the finished one. This looks beautiful. So now we know how to use air dry clay. So let this sit overnight and we're all set. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tracia and I'm here with my daughter Sydney. And we are working on projects today that are symmetrical. Sydney's going to start by using these three chenille stems and she's going to twist them in the middle to create a framework for this snowflake ornament that's really fun and easy to do. Okay, I'm going to take these, I'm going to twist them, and you can just spread them apart. Okay, now I've done the same here, and I'm going to take one end and push three of the stems through a white pony bead, and that will start the center of the snowflake. Okay, Sid, I'm going to give you this one to work on, and then we'll come back to this project in just a minute, okay? Thank okay. you. Let's talk about this beaded bracelet. This beaded bracelet is symmetrical in two ways. It's symmetrical because the beads on this side of the bracelet are exactly the same on this side. But then it's also symmetrical by color because the colors on this side are the same as on this side. This is an easy project to do. All we did was take one piece of elastic stretch cord, tie a simple knot in the end to hold the pieces in place and then we beat it all the way up. Once you're done beating, ask a friend to lend you their arm. Can I use your arm, friend? Go around and tie a simple knot. Tie a knot just like in a shoestring and then go back and tie it again, but go through the loop twice. Nice and tight. Put a dab of glue or a dab of fingernail polish on there and let it dry. And then you can thread those extra, cut them and thread them right back through the bracelet and they will not even be seen. And there you have a symmetrical bracelet. Okay, you get to work on the snowflake and I'm going to talk a little more about symmetrical projects. Did you know a butterfly and a dragonfly are exactly symmetrical? They're the same on each side of the opposite sides. In other words, if you cut it right down the middle and you looked at the left side, it would be a reflection of the right side. And I've used clay, dragonflies, and butterflies for this project. Also, if you'll notice, the left side and the right side are exactly the same. Even the colors are symmetrical. We use the exact same pattern of colors on each side. One thing that doing a symmetrical design can do is it can give you perfect balance to your design and it will always look um, even and have a little designer flair like it's well thought out. If you look at the glass necklace here, using the glass beads, even though it doesn't seem to look symmetrical, if you take and you cut it right down the middle, you will see that it is. All the beads on the left are the same as all the beads on the right. We've even done a symmetrical design using braiding cord, which is something really simple. We just attach the braiding cord findings on one end, tied a knot, tied another knot, added the shell charm, and repeated on the opposite side. And as you see, it's perfectly symmetrical. Let's get back to Sydney and what she's working on. That looks great, Sid. So you're folding and just adding pony beads. That snowflake is perfectly symmetrical, and so is that heart. But one thing about the heart is, it's symmetrical in shape, but you did different colors on both sides, so the colors aren't symmetrical. That was really interesting. You did a great job. 
I hope you have fun making symmetrical projects. And that's it for today's show on symmetry. On our next program, we feature national symbols. It's kind of surprising, but somehow they all ended up being different animals and birds. We hope you can join us on Hands On. Projects and ideas for today's show are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This show is number 1010. Hands On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc., manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com